Now that gets us to an interesting question, which is something else I agreed I'd talk about, which is illegal drugs and kind of a market for and, and, and what happens when you, you try to prohibit something like rhino horns or drugs or something like that. So let's try to model uh, prohibitions in general, but maybe a prohibition on illegal drugs, on drugs in that way. So the way I think about this problem and the way I kind of started thinking about this problem, and Gary and I wrote a paper along these lines, is to think about there being a demand for drugs and initially think that drugs are, these drugs are legal. And, you know, they're, they're constant marginal cost industry, right? They might be upward sloping, who cares? They're, but they're a constant marginal cost industry. Um, and the competitive price would be equal to marginal cost in equilibrium. And, you know, the fact that it's perfectly competitive doesn't really matter if it was some imperfectly competitive with some equilibrium markup over marginal cost, it really wouldn't change the analysis much at all, right? Perfectly competitive, just a nice, simple model to utilize. And then you say, well, we want to make this drug illegal, okay? And in particular, we're going to make it illegal by having a policy of punishing suppliers, right? That's the, that's the key. It's going to be a... And I think that's a reasonable description of the approach many countries have taken to make drugs illegal. It's been a focus on the suppliers. Maybe they're the smugglers who bring drugs in from abroad. Maybe they're the street-level dealers who drill the drugs. But it's a focus on the, the, the supply side of the problem. We're gonna, and, and, but we're going to assume, at least initially, that there's no effect of this prohibition on the demand for drugs. That is, the willingness to pay of people to get drugs is going to be the same in the, when they're illegal as when they're legal. We might come back and say, well, no, there's something about making them illegal, and people have argued both ways. Making it illegal reduces demand because people don't like doing illegal things. Other people said making illegal makes increases demand for particularly for young people or somebody who feel like, well, this is my way to like rebel and be whatever. So uh, I'm going to put both of those arguments aside and say it just doesn't have an effect. The, the key point is, is it raises the cost of supplying drugs by forcing these suppliers to do things that they otherwise wouldn't. Right? That is, they might have to be sneaky in terms of how they get their drugs into the country. They got to produce them in some illegal way as opposed to a factory that might be very efficient. We might have to, you know, we, these people might be, you know, have to hire guards to protect their, they can't use contracts, for example, to deal with their suppliers and their customers, so they have to kill them if they don't do what they want, right? They have to, you know, they have to do all kinds of stuff like that. And that's costly. And by making it costly, you're able to raise the price up to p hat. That is, you're able to raise the street price of drugs above what they would be if they were legal by making suppliers incur these extra costs. And I'm going to assume this is also a constant cost industry. Although you might think that there are reasons why this wouldn't be constant cost while this would be. Right? That is, you've changed the industry fundamentally when you make it illegal. Because what causes an upward sloping supply curve is some notion of comparative advantage. And while there might not be much comparative advantage at, you know, changing, you know, changing Sudafed into methamphetamine, that anybody with a chemistry set could do that. You know, the, there might be a lot of competitive advantage in terms of, like, avoiding the police or being violent enough to enforce your contracts. And it, there's a different set of assets that are valuable in the illegal market than are valuable in the legal market. It could go the other way, too. I'm just saying, once you've made it illegal, there's no reason to believe the producers are going to be the same. And we definitely saw that, like, when we had alcohol prohibition in the United States. It's not like the same guys who used to produce legal alcohol just took their factory and turned it over to make it an illegal alcohol factory, right? It was, 
that's not how the world worked. It changed com completely how the good was produced, marketed, who was selling it. And then when we got rid of prohibition, guess what? It changed completely again. Like, uh, you know, Al Capone didn't become like, you know, the guy making, you know, make, running Budweiser, right? You know, he, he lost his comparative advantage when it became legal. Um, and so anyway, I'm, I'm going to put that aside. I'm just going to assume it shifts costs up. 